Welcome to Life Words Day by Day, where we've been talking about from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, the power of Christ and the power of God. I recently read a biography on George Whitfield, who preached to thousands in the open air and repeatedly had things thrown at him, including dead cats. Can you imagine trying to keep your composure, much less your train of thought, while a dead cat is flying at your face? Well, here's Jesus in front of people who mocked, shoved, beat, disregarded, spat upon him, lied about him, and Jesus teaching perfectly, preaching perfectly, healing perfectly, revealing perfectly, loving, submitting, suffering perfectly, dying perfectly. That's quite the display of power in the midst of those circumstances. But that's not the greatest aspect of God's display of power in this gospel. The greatest display is the actual death and resurrection. To raise the dead is a unique expression of divinity. But the death and burial and resurrection of Christ are far more than a physical display of power. There are spiritual realities being affected as well. In God's wisdom and power, Jesus becomes sin for us. But not only that. Not only does God do something for us in the gospel that we could never do, He also does something in us. We become the righteousness of God. We become heirs of salvation. We become united with Christ in His death and resurrection. It takes the power of God to take weak, ungodly, enemy sinners and turn them into saints who have minds that love truth and hearts that love Christ and wills that are bent toward God's word and his ways. What was begun by infinite power is also sustained by that same infinite power. As you pray today, please remember Aodu Rodriguez and his family are changemaker missionaries in Cape Verde. And also remember the Urdu Life Word broadcast that's heard throughout Pakistan.